In this video, we're going to be talking about editing cell entries, and that information is going to be located on pages Excel 10 and 11 out of your textbook. Now, you can change or edit the contents of an active cell at any time, and to do so, you can just double click the cell, or you can click in the formula bar, or you can just start typing. Now, Excel will automatically switch to edit mode when you are making cell entries. Now, of course, there's some different pointers that we use in Excel. If you look on page Excel 11, there are some different pointers. Uh, of course, uh, we do have um, a normal pointer, uh, which is our left pointing mouse pointer um, on there. Uh, of course, that, our normal pointer also changes to this plus sign when we're located inside of the spreadsheet. And this is used to select a cell or a range of cells, and really this indicates that we're in ready mode. Now, earlier we seen that if we place our mouse pointer here over top of the fill handle in our active cell, that turns this to the fill handle pointer. And of course that allows us to copy the cell contents to adjacent cells. If uh, we have our I-beam pointer uh, on there, uh, uh, if you would go into uh, the formula bar, you see there's the I-beam pointer, and that shows you that you can uh, input in contents in your active cell or in the formula bar. Of course, also we do have the move um, pointer, and this is where you can change the location of a desired cell uh, on there. So if I was going to move this, uh, I can point uh, to the edge of the active cell or the perimeter of the active cell uh, on there, and I can move this around. Now, if I would hold down my control key, you'll notice that my uh, mouse pointer changes again, and this is what we call the copy pointer. And this allows us to create a duplicate of the selected cell. And of course, finally, one of the other pointers that we have is this one right here, if you look in between the G and the H here, and this is what we call the column resize. Of course, there's also a row resize as well. And of course, that changes the width of the column or the row. So if we take a look now back on page Excel 10 on step 1, it tells us that we want to click on cell A5. Now in this case, we probably notice that this name looks a little bit funny. Uh, that's on there. So it tells us that we want to click to the right of the P um, in the formula bar. So we're just going to go right here. And of course, as soon as you click in the formula bar, a blinking vertical line, which we know that as the insertion point, appears in the formula bar at the location where the new text will be inserted. Now the mouse pointer changes to the I-beam pointer when you point anywhere in the formula bar. Of course next we're going to hit our delete key and of course earlier you probably noticed I said the name Peter on this uh, because that is the true name of that except for they misspelled it and put, they, they put an I into it. So once we press the delete key uh, on there then we're going to press our enter key here and of course that is going to accept the change and uh, on there so it accepts our edit and of course the spelling of the employee's first name has been corrected. Now you could also press the enter or tab key to accept an edit as well and the enter key is on your keyboard uh, on there. Uh, so if we say enter key that is on your keyboard if we say enter button that is this check mark up here. Now pressing enter to accept an edit moves the cell pointer down one cell and if you press the tab key, that is going to accept the edit and moves the cell pointer one cell to the right. Of course, next what we're going to do is we're going to click on cell B6. And of course, uh, it's a value and it says 35. It tells us that in step 3 we want to press our F2 key. Now, of course, on some keyboards you may need to press a function lock key or you may need to press a function key uh, to accept uh, the F2. Uh, but on most keyboards, the ones in our lab and everything uh, does have an F2 key and all you have to do is press the F2 key. And that's not the letter F and the number 2, that's above the numbers and it just says F2. Now when you do this, Excel is going to switch the edit mode and the insertion uh, point blinks within the cell or inside of the cell. And pressing that F2 activates the cell for editing directly in the cell instead of up in the formula bar. Now whether you edit in the cell or the formula bar is simply a matter of preference. The results in the worksheet are still going to be the same no matter what you do. In this case, if we move on to step 4, it tells us that we want to press our backspace, which is going to delete the 5, and we want to type in 8. 
So we turn this from 35 to 38. And we want to press our enter key on our keyboard. And of course we'll notice that now uh, some changes have been made. Of course first of all um, cell B7 has become the active cell and we've changed the contents of uh, our cell B6 from 35 to 38. But did you also notice that the calculations in cell B15 down here, the totals, as well as cell E15 um, has changed uh, uh, in addition to cell E7. So all those uh, cells values have changed because these are all uh, formulas. So just because you made this one change right here, cell E6, cell E15, and cell B15 all change because we made one change. And that's because those cells contain formulas that include uh, the cell reference B6 in their calculations. Now of course if you made a mistake when editing, you can always click on the cancel button on the formula bar before pressing your enter key. And that will confirm, uh, um, or which uh, does not allow it to confirm the cell entry. The enter and cancel buttons appear only when you're in edit mode. Now if you notice a mistake after you have confirmed the cell entry, that is when you need to go up here to the quick access uh, toolbar and undo the typing uh, that's on there or undo the last action. Now of course the undo button allows you to reverse up to the last 100 previous actions and you can do that all at one time. And to undo multiple uh, changes, you just click on this little down pointing arrow and you notice that here's all the actions that we've done so far uh, in, this uh, in these series of videos. If we now move on to step five and it tells us that we wanna click on cell A9. Once we do that, we're going to click, uh, or we're going to double click here, and it wants us to select the word one. So we can double click uh, this and double click the uh, name one, and that is going to select it. And of course, double clicking a word in a cell will select it. Now, when you select a word, the mini toolbar, um, as you may notice, uh, will appear automatically. Uh, of course, uh, it may disappear if you move your mouse pointer away. In step six, it tells us that we want to top in the name Javier, which is J-A-V-I-E-R. And while you're doing this, of course, remember, you can use the keyboard to select all cell contents by clicking to the right of the cell contents in the cell or formula bar and pressing and holding the shift key, then pressing the home key. Now, once we have typed in Javier, so uh, instead of having uh, Juan uh, Martinez, we're having Javier Martinez. And we're going to press our Enter key to accept the changes. And of course, when the text is selecting or selected, typing deletes it and replaces it with new text. Then next, we're going to click uh, double click on cell C12. So if we go here to C12 um, on there, and if we double click into that, we're going to press our uh, delete key and that will delete uh, the number eight there and we're going to type in a number four. Once we have that we can press our enter button next to the formula bar and of course notice the changes after you hit this now information in cell C15, information in cell F12 and F15 have all changed uh, on there. Of course double clicking a cell activates it for editing. Now go ahead and make sure that you save your work on here. And of course, if you ever want to recover unsaved changes to a workbook, now you can use Excel's auto recover feature to automatically save or auto save your work as often as you want. This means that if you suddenly lose power or if Excel closes unexpectedly while you're working, you can recover all or some of the changes uh, you made since you last saved it. Of course, this is no substitute for regularly saving your work this is just kind of an insurance policy for you. Now to customize the auto recover settings, we can take a look at this by clicking on the file tab, pointing down to options, and then we can click on the save area here in this little side menu. And of course then we see on here we have some information about saving the workbook and then we have of course the auto recover exceptions and everything else. And of course the auto recover lets you decide how often and into which location it should auto save the files. 
uh, that's on there. Of course, this is where uh, the auto recover file location is at. And so if I would lose a file, this is where it would go to. I can change the time up here. So right now, every 10 minutes, it's going to save my work. I can reduce this down uh, so it saves more frequently, or if uh, I'm a little bit more brave, I can increase it up uh, and it will save it as well. Uh, generally, uh, the more frequently you have it save, uh, the more likely all of your changes are going to be on there. Now, when you restart Excel after losing power, a document recovery pane will open up and provide access to the saved and autosave version of the files that were open when Excel closed out. Now you can click the file tab or and click open on the navigation bar uh, then click on any file in the recent workbooks to open up an autosave workbook as well. Uh, you can go ahead and click on OK on this uh, and make sure that you do save your work and that uh, concludes the information that's on pages Excel 10 and 11. In our next video we're going to be entering and editing simple formulas.